Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and we're going to talk about TrueNAS Scale and a web-based file manager called File Browser. This solves a couple problems. One, transferring files over SMB over any high latency connection like a VPN can be a little bit slow. I've got a video where I dive into some of the details of that. Second, some people have asked for a file browser to be able to manipulate files via a web interface on TrueNAS, and this solves that problem. This was not available when I did my video on VPN and file shares, so unfortunately it wasn't a solution I could just point at and offer at the time, but hey, I'm really glad that application exists here today. Now, a couple of things that are going to be out of scope in this video is one, setting up the permissions because I have a separate video that dives into how to set up application permissions, which I happen to have demoed the same software with to get it set up. So pretty easy to follow all the app permissions for setup. We're going to focus on just setting up the tool and how it works, which is pretty slick. And second, I'm not going to cover reverse proxy, but I will leave you with a little bit of a warning. Before you expose this or really any file sharing service to the internet, please make sure you understand the risks that are associated with it. I always make sure things are behind a VPN unless absolutely some reason not to put them behind a VPN because there's always some risk that a project may have a flaw and the data that you wanted to share with maybe a select individual or small group of people could be exposed to everyone, whether by accident or flaw found in the system. So always really consider the risk. But yes, this can be paired with the reverse proxy, something like a Cloudflare tunnel or a reverse proxy like a proxy or any other number of reverse proxy projects. Nonetheless, that's all I have to say as far as warning. Let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial on how to set this up. All right, we're running the latest version of TrueNAS Scale 22.12.3.2, and we're going to go over here to our data sets. I have a app config data set and then nested underneath the file browser data set. For each different app that needs to have some configuration storage, as in the configuration of the app itself, I like to create a sub data set under my app config. So I know that this is where that data is stored in case I'd like to back it up or restore any version of the app. If you don't set this up and you put several users, for example, in file browser uh, and you have to reset it. Well, you'll have to reset up those users. So this is just a preference I have to make it simpler in case I have to reinstall or roll back to a previous version because you can snapshot any individual data set once you have it all set up or back it up. Now we're going to go over here to the apps. But before we do, we will point out we have share demo and share demo two. I have one extra nested data set here. These are the ones we're going to use for the demo. They've already been created. So let's go over here to our apps, available applications, type the word file, and the current version is 2.320106. Go ahead and click install. Application name, file browser, that's fine. Version, we're just going ahead and install the latest version. It doesn't have any previous ones. Environment variables, we're not going to change any of those. User ID, that's fine. Web port, optional if you want. Certificate, we're just going to go ahead and use the free NAS default certificate. You can choose uh, if you have more certificate, they may be in the list here. But if you're going to use a reverse proxy, whichever cert you want to use, then it'll be passed on to the reverse proxy. Just something to consider there on um, whether or not you'll run into any problems with it having a self-signed cert or if you want to cert on there. And now we get to the file browser config storage. Host path. This is what I'm going to choose instead of the IX systems default. Mount, epoch, configs, file browser. This is where it's going to store that configuration for the file browser right there. Next is how do we want to present the data? Well, we're going to call it share demo. And that is just because I have it called share demo for the mount. But you can call it whichever you want. These don't have to match, but for sanity, I think they should match. So your mount path is mount APOC share demo. What it will show inside of file browser is share demo. And it does require that slash there. Then we'll just scroll down the bottom and hit save and let it deploy the application. Once the app is deployed, we're going to click on web portal and we'll put in a username and password which is going to be admin, admin. And there's our folder. We can double click share demo. I already have some data in there. So I can look at each one of these, click on one of these images. Great, I can view images. I can click on one if I would like to download the image. It will kick off a download. So the system is working perfectly fine. Let's go in the settings though, because admin, admin is a terrible idea to leave it there. So let's go ahead and fix that and we can change it if we want or Instead, I would actually recommend creating another user. So you could leave blank to avoid changes, but we actually want to go to user management and create a new user, user Tom. Leave everything else the same. We'll make Tom an administrator as well. And we're just going to go ahead and hit save. 
And then from there, I want to log out. Then we go back over to settings, user management. Now it doesn't have that I found a way to delete the admin, but you can still change the admin password, make it really long, or even take away the admin privileges for this particular user. That way that's one less thing for people to guess, kind of a security step here. Go down, admin can't do anything, hit save, user updated. So it's got a new password and it's not able to do anything if someone were to figure out that password. So now admin's defunct and Tom is the admin and then you can start creating more users. Over here, I will say, let's go ahead and switch it to dark mode and we'll update, settings updated. Now it looks a little better in dark mode. Now, before we go any further, let's go ahead and reconfigure something because we have two shares. And those shares are Share Demo and Share Demo 2. So let's go ahead and look at Share Demo 2. So we have some files in there as well. But let's get both of them in here. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go back over to TrueNAS Scale. Click on Edit because we want to edit this instance. We don't have to stop it. It'll automatically restart when we make the config changes. And here's our Share Demo. And we want to add another one. We want to add it as a host path, the mount path, and we'll put a two after that because it's going to go here and share demo two. So we've got the share demo one, share demo two. And when we click save, it's going to go through and reset the settings. Now it's not going to lose the users or configurations that I have in there. It's just going to reset and add this second share in there. And it's going to relaunch this file browser tool. All right, it's active again. So we're going to go to back to web portal. And now we have share demo and share demo two. Now, what I did here was put a bunch of random small files in here to show you that it will handle, oh, I think I have about 15,000 or so files in here. They pull up pretty easy and we want to compare that to when we do the random small files on a share. So this is that same share demo two. And it pauses a little bit just to pull this up over SMB. This is over a VPN, uh, but it's a rather fast VPN, so it didn't pause as much. But mileage may vary if you have a more high latency connection where this would pause even more because SMB really doesn't handle latency very well. But of course, when you're doing it through a web browser, it's a whole lot easier to do because that has no problem working over those connections. Now let's talk about how this system works and how we can upload or download files. And let's go ahead and upload something to here. So we'll click on this where the have upload button. We can actually grab an entire folder or grab an individual file. And I got a couple of voicemails and I'll hold down and grab two of them, hit open. And I can now upload those voicemails right to here. What if I wanted to download again? Along with all these other pictures, I'm just holding the control key to select individual files or you can hold shift and grab the first file and grab them all. So let me go ahead and do that. So if we do shift over to here, That'll grab them all. They've also got a little checkbox at the top here to select multiple. And then we can click to download them as a zip, a tar, a tar GZ. I think this is nice because now I can grab these, zip them, and then grab them as a normal download. And then even go back because I went to the downloads folder. Go to file, downloads. There's that file. And we can actually just send it right back up to the system. And there it is. Now, as far as how that shows up on our shares, it's one and the same. So we can look at it. We can see that it added these particular files to the shares. It's a really easy utility to use. And there's still one more feature. What if we wanted to share this externally, but not have someone have a login? This is where if you're using this over reverse proxy, you want to share something out in a public internet. It has an option for that. You can set the share duration to, let's say you have two hours or seconds, minutes, days, however you'd like, but we'll leave it at hours, optional password. And then we can click share and then we can go ahead and click copy to that link and we can even create more shares and go on from there now to see the shares we're going to close this one we're going to go here settings share management and you can see the shares now when it did this and we can recopy it to the clipboard and we can show you the share it creates i did have this set up with a certificate using the cert that's for TrueNAS the port number, share, and it just adds a random file. Now, of course, if you have a reverse proxy, this would be with whatever the fully qualified domain you have at the end of it, but that's all you have to do to get this working, HTTPS and that, and now you can share this document until it goes away or until we do this, we delete it before the time expires and it leaves this little message of it feels lonely here. Now, if we come over here to the global settings, there are a few more things that you can do, such as running very specific commands, setting scope. They have this all listed out in their documentation, including different authentication managements, 
custom branding, and other command line interface options you can do, special commands and configurations. As always, leave your thoughts and comments down below. Head over to my forums for a more in-depth discussion on this or other topics. And like and subscribe if you want to see more content from this channel. Or reach out to us at lawrencesystems.com if you'd like to hire us for some consulting around TrueNAS and other things we talk about on this channel. And thank you.